Like, follow, share, subscribe. Social media has become a way for us to connect with friends, keep up with the news, and more recently, get sucked into possibly harmful spiritual groups. One so-called Instagram guru has founded his community online, touting his ability to control the weather, his connection with aliens, and his status as an actual god. Is he inviting followers to an enlightened lifestyle or recruiting suckers to fund his exotic vacations, fine whiskeys, and expensive cigars? This week's episode is Bentinho Massaro, Instagram Guru. Up, bump in the night, your heart fills with dread. Probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinisterhood. I'm gonna kill you. I meant to Google something before we started. What was I'm just that? gonna ask you instead. Go on. Is it okay to call people douchebags? Is that something we're allowed to still say? <laughs> I think you can. I thought you were going to ask about the use of the word guru, which I went down a whole research oh. into NPR's Code Switch, and they talked to a lot of experts and said they explained how the word has transformed since the 1960s, and it was very, I'll link it in the show notes. It was very interesting. It's like a sub episode, so I guess it's their game show version of Code Switch, which is a great show. Um, and it, it is, it is, it's now been used more in the mainstream and they use the example that NPR like uses it. They didn't talk about douchebag in the episode. <laughs> Damn. If there's NPR, an episode where of are your priorities, at? <laughs> if there's a, a word, what's the one, I can't remember the word, uh, show on NPR that, that airs on the weekends. It's so good. They need to do a douchebag episode. Yeah. I mean, um, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, I mean, it's a douchebag. This guy, <laughs> yeah, come on, dude, this guy is. One of my most hated people of the past five years. Can I just tell you an honest, I just want to be honest with you because I suggested this topic. And when I first saw a video of him, I thought, Christy's going to fucking hate this guy. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> so I suggested it for Well, that you're reason. not wrong. You know me well. Like uh, Jim says Hi. of Pam, I know the things Pam yes. likes. But I really know the things she doesn't like. I know the things Christy hates. And the Vice video of this man saying, I can control the weather. And then they sit there and it just keeps raining. It's so funny. Dude. It's the funniest shit I've seen. I couldn't write a sketch as funny no. as him just fucking up. He's straight out then, of an SNL sketch. <laughs> yes. For sure. Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is this is the ultimate grift. It's genius. We, we talked a long time ago about we needed to have our own cult. And... I swear to you, this man, can you imagine creating a spiritual movement where you tell your followers, it is really important to me that I have these fineries, <laughs> so I need very expensive cigars and fine whiskey. It's part of my spiritual movement, and I need you to fund it. <laughs> it's like a joke. I, it's hilarious. If I don't have Cheetos and Miller Lite and Diet Coke, you guys, the world is going to collapse around us. I have to stay at the Ritz-Carlton or we'll all die. Yeah. So... <laughs> I need you Mine to work were this out. Very, my bar was much lower than the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> I mean, I looked at this guy's website. He's in Bali and all these badass places. You gotta oh, aim high, yeah. man. No, I mean, you gotta shoot for the moon. So, yeah, it's very interesting because he's not really espousing anything new that we haven't heard from a thousand other cult leaders. But the way he's gone about it mm -hmm. is similar to how one would set up a startup. Yes, yes. It's it's, it's a brand it's new thing. I'm, it's very smart. And with the reach of social media, he has endless followers at his fingertips. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, with most Colts, Jones Day, Heaven's Gate and things. I mean, Heaven's Gate re recruited. Jones Town. If, if, Jones Day is a law firm. Also Jones, a did I say Jones Day? Oh, you said man. Jones Day. It was more also than a, a day. It was a, it was a long time. Um, Heaven's Gate recruited a few from their videos but mainly it was more grassroots type of stuff mm -hmm. where usually it's in person yes you would have hundreds maybe even a thousand followers but the growth was much slower because you had to get the word out there face to face now you can just reach millions of people globally mm -hmm. on you know a handful, a handful of different platforms yeah 
I also was reading an expert talking about the pandemic and the impact of these because he's not the only one. And we could do a series of online people who have Mm -hmm. suckered folks out of money and especially the growth that's occurred during the pandemic that one expert was saying back when, you know, you know, before social media, you would really have to kind of what we saw with Buddha Field, where you would corner them away from their mm-hmm. families, have them come live in a compound, take them out into the forest, convince them that they needed to do this. Well, now with the pandemic, people were isolated away from their families in their house. And the glowing screen was the one telling them all the things they wanted to hear of everything will be better. All you have to do is give me some money. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is sign up for this retreat virtual retreat and then you get that same euphoric feeling where before you'd have to isolate yourself out in the forest somewhere you're getting it in your own bedroom so it's a particularly dangerous time and you're already isolated from your family so the pandemic kind of took that step uh they did a favor for all these people yeah Mm -hmm. it's cranked it up it's rough yeah and what's even scarier is this is very this particular guy we're talking about is fairly new and yes. his followers continue to grow daily. You know, I mean, this is ongoing. So this isn't mm-hmm. like most cults we've covered where there's an end tragically or it just, you know, kind of fell apart. Like this is still happening and is still very active. And they're very active online. So I do wonder if when we publish this, mm. if we will have a response from them, because I was reading some YouTube comments of someone had done a super clip of all the most idiotic things he said. Uh, I believe the title of the video is Behind the Shitty Grin, which is a very funny <laughs> title. And so, you know, also, someone was said it this... days long because he said a lot of real stupid stuff. Uh, it was part one of five. Oh, <laughs> I, there you go. It was 10 or 15 minutes long. So there's plenty. <laughs> Uh, And someone had commented and said, this guy's a grifter. He's an idiot. He's a charlatan. You know, all these various comments. And there were pro Bentinho commenters Mm. on there being like, you're just on the wrong vibration. You just don't understand. You know, if you want to comment on my Instagram, I'm on. I'm vibrating on my own thing. Mm -hmm. I'm cool, man. Just you do you. We're here to. Dipsy. To 15. I don't remember what the special is. <laughs> you can go vibrate. You get a month free. You can go, Not that that's I signed what up. It is. Just saying. <laughs> you can go vibrate He's with Dipsy. In- yes, we got something you can vibrate yourself on. Uh, we don't need your uh, YouTube videos. Your but yeah, energy so wave. I am curious to see if we'll get some type of. Uh, it's not quite that possible. I want. To, no, I, but I don't welcome that. But you no, know. no. Uh, but it's. Uh, as we always say, everything is backed up factually. We have sources. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so for all this. Um, and yeah, not just it's like people's opinions. All of this stuff is from videos coming out of his mouth. I mean, you can watch yes. it. It's quite remarkable what he, with the utmost confidence, is willing to say into a microphone with a camera that is mm-hmm. for, ha- we all have it forever and ever and ever. Yeah, most, uh, I mean, every single quote here is from a video of him saying Mm -hmm. it. It's not, he allegedly said this. It's he looked into a camera or he had a podcast for a while, spoke into a microphone and straight up said it. So that's the other fascinating part is he doesn't seem, he he grants interviews to like Vice, Truly, Playboy. People have come in kind of saying, hey, we want to talk to you. Because people are saying you're a cult leader, and he's like, "Come on in, I'll show you. I'll sh- everything's fine." And he's he's willing to open the door. So, um, maybe we'll get invited to a really if it's if the retreat's in like Bali, like I'll go. I mean, like, I'll may- yeah, I'll probably in, like, you Bali. know if I yeah, I'm not gonna like not go to that just because it's it's a he's a cult leader. <laughs> I mean, it's for research. So. I I also feel like we won't get sucked in because I sent you several gifts of my face. Yes. <laughs> As I was watching these videos, and it was just pure confusion. We'll point out a couple of the incidents in here. If I was on the receiving end, I don't know that it would have gone the same way. <laughs> That's what happened. Nah. No, no, no. Well, before we get into it, we have some thank yous. Uh, we. I wanted to say uh, our list of future episode topics you guys are great you send them in all the time mm-hmm. we love them it was a mess of a list i went through and made it into a database thank because you very much i love my spreadsheets and we realized that at a may on instagram suggested the denver airport some of you us others of you might have as well i apologize because the list was a huge mess it's now a database though so if you suggest we have topic a database in the future, much like the fbi <laughs> Yes, <laughs> run it through the database. Uh, so apologies. Uh, also, any other topics. If you're like, hey, I sent that in. You did. And we saw it where I just, um, my record keeping was not as good. But I'm on it now. 
So thank you, Ate May on uh, Instagram for sending that our way. Yes. Also, are you? Oh my gosh! Are you using one right now? I can't my see cup, your drink. My my cup runneth over. It's oops. You heard it. It's red. It's a red squishy nice. straw. Nice. So Montana sent us some Amazon straws and. I saw Taylor, who's actually my cousin, at a party, and she gave me a silicone straw. So our cups run it over with silicone straws. It turns out uh, I didn't know about the metal, that metal straws weren't the only reusable straw. And then I heard a story that someone was using a metal straw and tripped and stuck their eyeball. Whoa. So now when Paris uses metal straws, I'm like, honey, can you switch out to the rubber straw? I'm that's, really nervous. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. It's a. I feel like it's probably kind of a freak accident, but sure. it made me really nervous. But, but you know, silicone straws it could still happen. I mean, they're lovely. They're so great. thank you, yes, tons, thank you, so and tons much. of listeners also suggested silicone tips for straws. So thank you, my Denver airport discussion of uh, global warming and how I wanted to better the environment. Well, so thank yes. you for those. Thank you very much. Also, thank you, Jenny and her son Simon, for sending my Simon the cutest little space rocket ship puzzle with his name on it. We put it together in front of him, Ella and I did, so mm-hmm. he, he could see what it looked like. It was so very sweet. When you guys think of my kids and send them things, it just warms my heart. It's so, so sweet. Speaking of Ella, uh, we went to our first restaurant in mm-hmm. over a year and a half the other day. Sat on the patio, went to Matito's, and I took her to the bathroom, and a very nice woman came out of the stall in front of me and said by the way there's no toilet paper in there i said oh thank you so much and she said also huge fan and i said what (laughs) thank you and i was so taken aback that i don't feel like i was appreciative enough so if you are listening very nice woman that said hi to me in the bathroom (laughs) matitos thank you so much (laughs) for the kind words and also wanted to just say uh because she said this is probably weird in a bathroom. It's not weird in a bathroom. Please say hi yeah. to me wherever. If you see me out somewhere and you want to say hi, please always say hi because it makes me feel awesome and I uh, want to connect with all you guys. So same, same. Please, I always people said someone said I thought it was you, but I wasn't sure. I always have a necklace that says my name on it, both for new you know strangers and people who might know me. So you can always ID if it's me or not with the Heather necklace. Oh, that's how. Man, that I was about to get real dark. Good God! Are they gonna identify my body? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. If I don't. I, I don't need take to it off when I your run. Body. I, yeah, so I don't take it off when I run or or uh, work out. I started working out at Pure Bar. Thought I was gonna die. It's great. It feels great. It felt like a million bucks. I loved it. But I do wear the necklace so in case I peel over, <laughs> they'll be able know. to know who I was because I'm f- fairly new. They all seem to know my name, but we'll see. But yeah, that is. I think of the same thing. We're both dark, yeah. <laughs> totally freaky <laughs> thinking. So, so yeah. Well, awesome. Well, um, I'm Christy. I'm Heather. And let's get into it. Bettino Massaro was born March 13, 1988, in the Netherlands, just outside of Amsterdam. His parents, an energy company worker and elementary school teacher, subscribed to New Age beliefs and passed those on to Massaro at an early age, enrolling him in a program that taught the Silva Mind Control Methods, a practice designed to increase IQ, instruct clairvoyance, and help explore telekinetic powers, according to The Guardian. Massaro quickly took to the New Age way of thinking and excelled in his classes. He later told Playboy in an interview that he was not surprised that he did well, saying, I always knew I'm a superhero. I always knew everyone can do anything they want. Well, at first blush, that seems like a good thing for a child to say, you know? Believe in yourself. (laughs) Yes, have confidence. You can do anything you want. That's what I tell you, Ella all the time. You tell her she can move things with her mind? I do not say that, no. But I do get tell there, her that she there. can be anything she wants to be, and I will always love and support her. I tell her this every night when I tell her good night for bed. Oh, my God. That's amazing. I run down this whole... I have a whole thing I say to her at bed each night. I tell her... <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> I love this. I say, um, you're the smartest, bravest, strongest, sweetest, kindest, funniest, most creative... Most inquisitive, most loving, most beautiful, best big sister, best daughter, best friend, best girl in the whole wide world. I I love you so much. You're so special. You can be anything you want to be, and I'll always love and support you. (laughs) And then the other night, I was laying there with her, 
And she rolled over and she looked at me and she goes, you're the smartest, funniest. And I was like, oh, she knows it. She by knows her. it. And she said it back to me Oh my because God. that's always so rewarding when you see that in your kids because, you know, they're listening, but are they really listening? Mm-hmm. And then when they say something like that, you're like, they've been listening. Oh, <laughs> I love it. It's so sweet. Mm, yeah. Sweet so I guess I got to also add. You can move things with your mind. Yes. And if you want to start a religion online, you can do that, too. (laughs) Well, I have told her she can be anything she wants to be, and I always love and support her. So I've set myself up for having to get behind this if it happens. Well, despite having one of the highest IQs in his class at his more conventional grade school, his unconventional and new age interests often isolated him from his peers with his classmates describing him as weird, according to Playboy. More alarming is a disturbing childhood story about himself and a cat that Masaru has discussed at least twice in two videos on his YouTube channel. The gist is that Masaru received a pet kitten as a child living in Amsterdam. After having the cat for a while, he felt an evil force take over my body and threw the kitten repeatedly into a thorny bush nearby. He blamed... Spirits inside. Himself for harming the cat, according to AZ Central. Masaru later defined this period of his life as a... Desperate quest filled with effort, judgment, self-torture, and constant striving. According to The Guardian. Between Amy Carlson screaming at the cat and this man chucking a cat in a bush... I mean, it's the whole McDonald's triad that abusive... Animals at a young age is one of the defining characteristics of sociopaths and psychopaths later in life. So, well, again, followers try to defend it and say, well, it's taken out of context. But I mean, watch the video and videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, And they said, well, it's brave. He's being brave talking about that he tortured a cat. Oh, there's a lot of tapes of the Mindhunter guy interviewing monsters, too. And they were very brave for what was his name? Was it who did all those interviews? And he was played by Jonathan Groff on the TV show. Yes. I don't remember his real name. <sighs> After but Jonathan Groff. But how hot Groff. is Jonathan Groff? How can you <laughs> think of anybody? It's... That's what I'm like. My mind is just... <laughs> anyway, Jonathan Groff interviewed a lot of monsters. I blacked out when you said Jonathan Groff. <laughs> yes. but... God, he's perfect. He's yeah. so perfect. But yeah, but they're all very open about the things they did too mm-hmm. on tape. So I don't know. Yeah. What's brave? What is what brave? What is brave? You know? An already intense child. The Silva program encouraged Masaro to continue seeking alternative ways of viewing the world. Around age 10, he began studying meditation and practicing seeking enlightenment, according to AZ Central. His official website states that his search for enlightenment really started to pick up in both speed and intensity of the desire to seek and find the source of all existence. When he was 16 years old, he took in as much info as possible enrolling in classes like neuro-linguistic programming and the emotional freedom technique, a.k.a. tapping, a type of acupuncture that helps release energy blockages in the body by using your fingertips to tap on certain acupressure meridians. He practiced yoga, meditation, and Reiki. Two years later, at age 18, Masaru had an introductory shift into enlightenment and has been riding the wave of an intensely awakened life ever since according to the biography on his website. Yeah, that website biography is written by a follower, so it's pretty... Uh, I mean, I wrote my yeah. own bi- biography on my website. <laughs> we wrote our own biographies on the Sinister Ed website. Sure. It's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty flattering, but uh, I mean, let's just say, too, you and I are into a lot of this stuff, right? Meditation, breaking, I was breaking, literally yoga, about to say this. So acupuncture. I, I'm into all of these things, and I have also looked at a lot and even done tapping i mean it's okay. it's in fact when, back when we used to um do uh the things we were into on our patreon that was oh, one yeah. of the ones i i had teed up for a while and i have friends that do it and even one a yoga teacher that teaches it and it you know there are, it's not a scientifically proven thing they're co- considered pseudosciences but a lot of people really find it helpful i will say I read about eight articles on neuro-linguistic programming, and I still could not tell you, I could not concisely (laughs) explain to you what what it is. It's it's a lot to take in. But yes, we both, 
agree with a lot of the stuff he he preaches about. Oh yeah, no, I, that's the the interesting thing is I think anybody it's almost like you can have a uh, tons of people practice Christianity, but then you have a really harmful preacher that mm-hmm. steals money from people and you know sexually abuses their followers or Mormons there or Catholics or you know there's all these groups where there could be a core system of beliefs where a good chunk of people are totally fine, law-abiding, normal citizens, and they just find something beneficial. Same with all this. Also, I mean, a lot of it is kind of appropriated from other cultures, taken from other cultures. His is kind of a mixture of, it's not just, you know, Eastern, more that type of thinking, but uh, it is heavily influenced by, you know, his time in, in India and yoga and all that kind of stuff. And so it's not not to say any of this is, you know, we're not poo-pooing all that part of it because we all participate in it. But when you kind of take that and then use that to suck the people in, and that's the other problem is you see it and it's recognizable mm-hmm. and you go, oh, well, Christy and Heather do, you know, yoga and meditation and Reiki. Like, it must not be too wild. And your friends do something similar, but then it's kind of a, a gateway. You know, it's easy to get Yeah, I mean, and in. that's classic cult stuff you lure people in with stuff that isn't off the wall isn't mm-hmm. fringe thinking and, and it's comfortable <laughs> and then you get them in and all of a sudden we're talking about how the nazis really won the war and we're all aliens so and hitler had some good ideas yeah i mean you can't start off with that stuff no you're gonna no, scare you people off you gotta lure them in exactly in 2010 returning from a six-month Spiritual voyage. In India, Masaru claimed he had experienced an awakening, essentially becoming one with the universe, according to The Guardian. Wanting others to experience the same thing, Masaru began recording and uploading spiritual sermons to YouTube from his parents' house in Amsterdam. In one video, titled, What is Bliss? Masaru is seen walking in a pastoral setting, smiling as he stares into the camera. Eventually, he says, When the mind starts to realize that its very nature is freedom itself, then the inevitable response of the mind, or you could say of the body, is bliss. I've read this sentence (laughs) 40 times, and I still don't understand it. I am shocked that you don't recognize this because I read this exact sentence when I was in college at a party and someone had magnetic poetry on their refrigerator (laughs) and everyone was drunk at the party mixing up the words. Yeah, I mean... It's just, you look at it and you say, what? Because, but, yeah. You gotta break it down. When the mind starts to realize that its very nature is freedom itself. That's what confuses, okay, that's where it loses me. So you have to realize that the very nature of your mind is freedom. But then, I still don't understand that. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm telling you, this cult expert, we said this off the air, but I will say this now. For all of you listening to the uh, future quotes that are about to come from this fella in my very good Dutch accent, I think. I think it's Um, very – I've listened to him talk a lot, and you sound very similar to him. Well, he doesn't quite have an exact Dutch accent, and there's a bunch of different uh, dialects in there, too. But uh, I'm I'm doing my Bentinho accent. But uh, cult – one of this this cult expert that writes about New Age cults specifically said – One way you can ask yourself, is this person speaking to me, possibly a cult leader, is take their words that they speak verbally, either in a video or recording or live, run them through a transcription service. And when you look at them on paper, they're going to be indecipherable. (laughs) And that's what we got going on here is it's it's someone said on one of the YouTube comments, word salad chaos, Mm -hmm. which is exactly accurate. You think, did he leave some words out? Are there too many words in there? It just doesn't make any sense. And this is. One of the more understandable passages from him. Correct. Yes. I mean, and it starts getting longer, too. And also they said circular speaking. So saying when the mind starts to realize the response of the mind, you start re, you know, it's like circular comes back um, in the sentence. So I think that's uh, we're going to see that's pretty common for the stuff he says. It's a very and it's a tactic, too. Oh, yeah. No, it's on purpose because yeah. it, it gives you it's a lot of buzzwords that makes your head feel like you just heard something interesting or valuable without actually absorbing or hearing anything interesting. Or yes. He, he says, would tell us that we're too stupid to understand it. Yes. But, which he oh, does. Suck anytime. My balls. Yes. Suck my dick. He anytime <laughs> anybody questions it, it's well, you're just too dumb to understand. He says so much with saying nothing at all. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just full on nonsense. Yeah. It's just, chaos. it's just a, uh, what is it? Not a dictionary. What's the one that. Thesaurus. What, it's a, yeah, it's just like a thesaurus threw up. Verbal thesaurus diarrhea. Yeah. Verbal 
that's that's hard to say. That's a hard verbal, word to say. Verbal the thesaurus so, the diarrhea. So, the th- <laughs> All right, I'm done. I can't. Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. As more and more people found his sermons online, his YouTube following grew, prompting him to also launch his own website and Facebook page. Not long after, he launched his Instagram account, which currently has 41,000 followers. Initially, he drew in his followers with his sermons and speeches and held their attention with his intense videos, some of which involved him just staring into the camera while sporadically whispering, I love you. Speaking to The Guardian, followers described how Massaro's teachings made them feel. It made me feel manically better. It was definitely like a drug. And that's just one quote from many that oh, yeah. are... I felt like he was just speaking directly to me. It seemed like he had an energy and a light about him. I looked into his eyes and I felt myself like changing. Mm -hmm. They were saying too, his, because the way he shoots them are Mm -hmm. very close on his face. Sometimes the ones, especially where he's just staring and whispering, there was one of him looked like maybe like a mountainside or a hillside with this really beautiful meadow behind him. And again, he stares into it and then he turns and he looks right into the camera smiles super big and goes <laughs> I love you and if you're alone that's yeah. it's almost like you're it's like I'm trying to think of the equivalent of the point of view pornography that they make mm-hmm. where the camera is on you know where it you feel like it's you and somebody's turning around going like oh that feels so good do that to me someone going I love you I'm so glad we're on this mountain together it's it's kind of like that where it mm-hmm. tricks your mind into thinking you're there and yeah. it gives you that euphoric love feeling and if you're lonely isolated Mm -hmm. seeking something in your life whatever that may be and it's just you in this screen and him that could that could fill a hole that yeah needs to be i didn't mean to mention filling holes right that close to the pornography we mentioned dipsy your mind (laughs) (laughs) you've gone off track yeah it's 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 scary how captivating that can be i mean you it also like under the same umbrella, but a bit different, you can see how online predators, I mean, because yeah. is he not one? You know, I mean. Question mark. Yeah. So you can see how things like, you know, chat rooms and things with mm-hmm. minors and you get pulled in like that. Well, you feel special. Mm-hmm. Anytime somebody is looking straight into the camera, it's misleading, right? Because right now I'm looking into the camera and you're on the other side of Skype and it's live and it's real. But that's why I think YouTube videos are so powerful. Let's talk about Bo Burnham special. Oh, but gosh. If you haven't seen it, go watch it immediately. It's called it is, Inside. It is fucking amazing. I can't stop thinking about it. But besides just it being excellent, amazing, vulnerable, brilliant art, it is super intimate because for a mm-hmm. lot of the the interludes, and there's a lot of times when, and that's why we've loved Bo Burnham since the very first video he ever put out, because it's him on his little piano in his little, you know, attic or wherever he was in his room, staring right into the camera. So I think the intimacy of YouTube videos, and now TikTok, you and I are both big TikTok mm-hmm. users, where you have this intimacy you feel with somebody where you're they're looking you in the eye and you feel like they're talking directly to you. You can see how, it's one thing if we're watching, you know, whatever we send a lot of very funny videos back and forth me you and tommy (laughs) but it's it's funny if we're watching a funny person comment on something or someone talk about something they're passionate about but when it's like come to my retreat and spend thousands Mm -hmm. of dollars after enough videos telling you you are loved and worthy i love you come to my retreat and spend thousands of dollars you can see how like we said you don't lead off with that give me your money you lead off with i love you you're worthy come to me anyway also it costs two thousand dollars but it's okay because i love you so you can see how that what makes us feel really connected to artists and I, mm-hmm. I'm like super attached to Bo Burnham. I love him so much. I'm, I, we get attached to some of the people we follow on TikTok that I've, I've never met them, but I love them and I love watching their videos. As do millions of people, millions of people. And you, you see how it, it's kind of a big, it's a great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. Right. And do you use it to say, I love you so much, please give me $2,000 and come to my retreat. Or do you say like Bo Burnham's like, your phone is ruining your mind. Put yeah. your phone down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's any form of an abusive relationship and and gaslighting where, you know, I mean, any abuser rarely starts off abusing some, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. it's you, they lull you in. I mean, when I worked at the domestic violence shelter, I can't tell you how many women said it was great until the day we got married, like literally that night, a switch flipped and he became a different person. No, he was always that person. Mm -hmm. He just 
had been grooming you and was gaslighting you until and he hiding. and yes, until he felt like he had you in his grasp. Yeah, so that's the same thing with these types of cult leaders. Or the Buddha field guy saying, mm-hmm. "You're wonderful, you're brilliant, you're amazing. Come give me a private massage. Also, don't tell anyone. Yes. Also, pay me $50." So it's really sad when, and you can't blame the person on the other end of it who has been groomed, exactly what Mm -hmm. we're talking about. So it's nothing that anybody did because there is so much non-harmful content out there. I think when you get to this harmful stuff, it starts to, you know, you think, oh, it's just another YouTube video. Yeah, it blurs the lines because there is so much content. And with his stuff on YouTube, so much of the stuff I read would be from followers that were just kind of looking up spiritual Mm -hmm. uh sermons or or, you know on youtube and then the algorithm like with everything on youtube it's like you you might also like this and it would just autoplay so he's he doesn't even really have to do anything like it's doing it for him to get these people it's true it spoon feeds you what you want Mm -hmm. although today i was watching a work video it was about texas guardianship so it was like an educational video and on the side it said could you have accidentally given yourself the mark of the beast? Watch this faith sermon. And I thought, I don't really know how these are connected. I'm like, what have I been Googling to get that suggestion? <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah, so you're in a weird algorithm. The stuff some, you were, yeah. the screenshots you were sending me the other day, I don't know what you Googled, but. I'm in a lot of, st- I'm, I look up a lot of stuff. You're on some lists. <laughs> mm. At age 25, Masaru moved to the United States, where he continued to increase his following. In 2011, he was chosen to speak at a well-known spirituality conference called the Science and Non-Duality Conference. The following year, however, he was not invited back after publicly attacking the teaching styles of several other teachers. Whoops. Not a good look. That'll do it. as we'll see, that's one of the classic cult tactics is tear down who your competition your competition other teachers and make people believe that your way is the only way to believe mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. you discredit and defame those that you feel are in competition with you masaro's teachings are a mix of several philosophies including the secret buddhism and kabbalah according to a press release from trinfinity an organization he founded consisting of like-minded individuals his teachings about the universe include That everything is possible. The universe is made up of consciousness. Free will is a universal law. Reality is a reflection of our beliefs. And that peace, freedom, and happiness are everyone's birthrights. He told Playboy magazine, For the advanced seeker, I'm a breath of fresh air. Or the teachings are a breath of fresh air because they've never been heard it so clearly before. If you had researched all these philosophies and practices, anyone who has agrees that my teaching is genius. Uh, buddy, I'm going to say right now, I have never heard it so unclearly before. <laughs> he does not speak clearly about his his beliefs. But I will say, I agree, again, with the universe is kind of made up of consciousness. Free mm-hmm. will is a universal law. Re- that reality is a ref- We all deserve peace, freedom, and happiness. Those are things that I would agree with. And the Lonely Island, isn't it? That Kevin Garnett, anything is possible. So I would agree with that too, and yeah. always agree with the Lonely Island. So again, it's these things that on their on their face mm-hmm. seem fine. They seem uh, what was like uh, banal. Like they're not really, you know, yeah. it's not because it's all mi- a mixture of crap that he didn't think it up. You know, he read yeah. it. And, yeah, and that's what's irritating about this too is he's just pulling things from shit he's read. None of it's like an original thought. Correct. Yes, a, a good portion of it is the secret. Mm-hmm. Which Did you, you ever watch something that? else? Did I ever watch? No, uh-uh. the I just secret know the or book. Reddit. I had a friend that I worked with once who was like, "You've got to watch this. You've got to read it. It's life changing." And I watched it, and I was just like, "This is not for me." But I, what is I, it? Is it a documentary? They have a. Sh- it's a. I wouldn't call it a documentary. It's a uh, a probably an hour long thing, just about kind of what it is with mm. people talking about more like an infomercial, but better okay. produced. Like buy my book infomercial. Uh, more like if you follow these practices, this will be good for you. But I mean, I do agree with some of it because it's just chaos magic. Yeah, which is what you know 
what you put out into the universe, you'll get back. They do a lot of visualization. I remember a big thing from it was somebody talking about every night they went to bed visualizing a check that had been written to them that was like a million dollars or something like that. And then like eventually that came true. So it's just they like one publisher po- clearing house. <laughs> it's it's positive intentions and uh-huh. and things like that. I do that. I journal. Yeah, every same. Night. I a lot of the secret stuff I didn't disagree with. It was more kind of the cheesy way it was presented. Mm. But it it did. It was a best selling book. And, you know, I mean, it's stuff that isn't harmful. If yeah, done. You know, yeah. You know, but. He took it and somehow made it harmful. Yeah. By 2012, Massaro's online teaching centered around two main concepts, that enlightenment was achievable without meditation or intense self-reflection, and that an individual's thoughts, negative or positive, directly impacts what they receive from the universe, an idea made popular by the 2010 best-selling book, The Secret. There you go. Think and grow rich. That's another one. There's a lot of these. Yeah. Yeah. It was around this time that Massaro also created the movement called Trinfinity, based in Boulder, Colorado. The group of a dozen people, led by Massaro, believed that if you were suffering in life, it wasn't because of the world around you, but rather because of your perception of the world. True change could only be achieved by choosing to ignore the material world and, instead, focus on your higher self. Additionally, 2012 was also the year Massaro posted on social media that he had been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, according to a post on Medium. And another piece of the puzzle falls <laughs> into place. Yes. And that's a bold move to publicly say, I have been diagnosed with this, and then continue to espouse these cult-like uh, messages. Well, so because uh, I'm not a doctor, I googled it, and it says, uh, narcissistic personality disorder uh, symptoms include an excessive need for admiration, a disregard for others' feelings, an inability to handle any criticism, and a sense of entitlement. Uh, it must be diagnosed by a professional. Sounds like it was. It says, narcissistic personality disorder is found more commonly in men. The cause is unknown, but likely involves a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Treatment can help, but this condition can't be cured. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> and there you have it. I mean, yeah. he checks all those boxes. And there's a bunch. There, I think there's a whole subreddit of people who are in relationships with people or have been in relationships with people with NPD. And it's mm-hmm. serious. And I know oh, a person yeah. that was married to a person with this. It's very difficult. It uh, oftentimes leads to abuse. Not always, but sometimes. And so uh, just interesting reading those symptoms in... Uh, what we're what we're learning about this mm-hmm. fellow's life. Mm-hmm. Initially, the group attempted to spread their message of a global spiritual revolution throughout the community with a more grassroots approach. However, Massaro soon shifted the focus to online efforts. As of 2015, Massaro was spending $10,000 per month on Trinfinity's income to advertise his online persona, according to The Guardian. He had started charging $600 per hour for Skype sessions, holding spiritual retreats at luxury resorts, which cost believers thousands of dollars, and charging followers for exclusive online courses. At its peak, Trinfinity was making $60,000 per month for member subscriptions alone, according to a post on Medium by B. Schofield. So I'm torn here because it's one thing, you know, people sell access to themselves online. We are some of those people. Mm -hmm. But I think the difference is when you say, here's a thing that you can choose to pay for for entertainment. You can go to the movies and buy a ticket and watch a movie. You can go to Six Flags and buy a ticket. You can buy a season pass to Six Flags. Mm -hmm. I just bought a season pass to the State Fair of Texas. I'm very excited. Uh, And you can choose to spend your money on things like entertainment. But uh, I would, I would maybe challenge people to wonder if you're saying this is going to solve all my problems. And yeah. And is that what, where's the line between you can make a choice to subscribe to uh, somebody's Patreon. You can make a choice to buy a premium, you know, uh, Spotify premium or uh, subscribe to Disney plus and watch the con, you know, you got to watch the Mandalorian, but then also what, point does it become exploitive where the, that's going to solve you know i don't think disney's telling you if you don't watch wandavision you're going to perish eternally mm-hmm. so at what point is uh, there is a point i think that it becomes it goes from being free will of entertainment choose your entertainment to exploiting someone's need 
want for uh, fulfillment and spiritual enlightenment. Well, anyone that tells you all your problems will be solved if you just sign up for this course for a thousand dollars in two mm-hmm. weeks, you'll have no more worries. That's that's just factually not going to happen. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Like we're always going to have problems. Yeah. And when you put that price tag on it is when it really starts to exploit people's vulnerabilities. Mm hmm. While this behavior garnered him negative backlash from some Facebook followers, Phoenix spiritual teacher and blogger Dr. Edward Muzika said Masara was not deterred by these criticisms. Masara stated, I feel that what I offer is worth so much more than what I charge that I never feel like a fraud, even if I would charge a million dollars. As his online following continued to grow, so did the luxury of Masara's lifestyle. He began posting images of himself fit and shirtless on his Instagram page, traveling the world with his beautiful girlfriends. His hyper-masculine Instagram personality attracted followers who liked and commented on the photos showing Masaro sitting underwater in the lotus position, hiking, free solo rock climbing, drinking whiskey, playing pool, and smoking expensive cigars. The costly cigars, according to Masaro's website, are actually beneficial if you know how to attune your consciousness to the consciousness slash spirit slash information of the plant. What? What? Genius. I'm telling you, it's the major, it's the best script I ever heard. To say, <laughs> my religion requires me to smoke high quality cigars. You go. Damn. I Damn, d- dog. That's... I didn't know a cigar had a consciousness. So got that's to. on me. You got to. You got to attune your consciousness to the plant mm-hmm. and smoke it. That's the thing. You know what? I mean, heard... I'm not going to say I haven't done that. Uh, <laughs> well, I was gonna... You know, say, just not with we've, a cigar. <laughs> we've heard this the same, uh, again, he took from the spirit, or the secret, from Buddhism, from Kabbalah, from Cheech and Chong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know yep. what, if you want to attune yourself to the consciousness of the plant, you do you. <laughs> go, go for it, man. <laughs> Beneath the carefully curated pictures are wordy captions like, At the threshold between pure awareness and that absolute indescribable formlessness, You begin to realize against or in addition to what many of the Enlightenment teachings state, that you are in fact not just awareness, but rather that you have pure awareness. Followers are meant to believe that if they subscribe to the Trinfinity practices, they too could have a life that looks this amazing. I mean, he's got the influencer thing down to an ort. Like the pictures. Oh, the pictures are, if you didn't read the captions and you just looked at his pictures, you wouldn't even know that this is what he's doing. If there wasn't, you know, every few posts, it's like sign up for this or watch this, you know, whatever webinar yeah. thing. But without that, all the pictures, he just looks like a travel blogger. Yeah. Or I mean, he's yeah, on a or boat. Like a, or a yogi or something. Yeah. I mean, he's doing yoga stuff, but he'll be like on the side of a mountain on, the, you know, so he, it's, they're very visually stunning pictures. Although there's one where he's holding up the glass where he's trying to look like the Great Gatsby, which was an advertisement for a seminar. And I showed it to Paris and I said, Oh, does, is this supposed to be the Great Gatsby? He goes, yeah, but why is it Julian Huff's brother? <laughs> and I said, first of all, that's Derek Huff. Second of all, why do you know who Julian Huff's brother is? <laughs> and it's not Derek Huff. It's Bentinho Massaro. But they look exactly like it's kind of weird. They look they favor each other heavily. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's if you look at the pictures, they're all they're beautiful photography. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And that's what sucks people in. Oh, yeah. You, you know, would follow if it, it was, without knowing if it was grainy and like just you know bathroom selfies you're not gonna think this guy's for real you're not gonna want to give this guy money but when you see like oh he's got multiple really hot girlfriends Mm -hmm. he's ripped okay let's just go and get out of the way his body yeah fire fire very very nice very nice okay so you know also i just want to say everything online is a sham so just like just like anything these pictures are edited they're filtered they're completely curated to give off the the online personality he wants to give off. So, mm-hmm. but people forget that and they think, "Oh man, my life is so miserable. I'm so sad. He looks so happy. If I do what he does, then I'm going to be this happy too." It's exactly. That's the implication is you watch you see the the photos and you say how smiling and happy he mm-hmm. is sitting in a lotus position and it's like just join us just join mm-hmm. us in the seminar you're like look how happy everyone i too can be that even if it's not explicitly said it's just, you know it's the implied contract of a cult right of mm-hmm. this will solve all your problems yes for sure sinisterhood will be right back are you still going to the post office 
Are you still paying full price for postage? Well, thanks to Stamps.com, you don't have to anymore. Mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay less. A whole lot less. With discounted rates from USPS, UPS, and more. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It's a must-have for any business. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop shipping out orders, or just navigating this hybrid work life, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. No wonder over 1 million businesses choose Stamps.com for their mailing and shipping. Did you guys know if you sign up for the Sinisterhood Patreon, you get a Sinisterhood sticker that I personally stick in an envelope and draw a little ghost on the back mm-hmm. and says, keep it creepy, I write, I handwrite it, it's me. I spend time doing that, and I lick the stamps, or I lick the back of the envelope, so don't steal my identity and my DNA. But I was having to <laughs> go to the store and buy all these stamps to keep mailing them out, and it was taking forever. Stamps.com sends sheets. I can stick them through the printer. Blammo. They are in the mail. I also don't have to lick those stamps, so it's less DNA that I'm sending to you, but you still get your stickers on time with perfectly calculated postage from Stamps.com. With Stamps.com. You get discounts of 40% off post office rates and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention, Stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code, CREEPY, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. Mm -hmm. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in creepy. That's stamps.com, promo code creepy. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Uh, I've been off my shaving game back when it was the winter. It's hot as heck in Dallas right now. Got to wear shorts, got to wear skirts. I'm actually in my regular shaving routine now. My legs are super smooth. And that first shave, after letting my hair grow for a while, Mm. it was so satisfying. And I just love, I love showing off my legs now. They're not, (laughs) I mean, they they haven't seen the sun, so, but they're very smooth. Same, 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 same. Yeah, I need a razor that makes shaving life uncomplicated and is gentle on my skin that leaves it moisturized, super smooth, and bump-free. And the Athena Club razor is hands down the best razor I've ever used and ticks all of these boxes. Uh, Athena Club's razor has thousands of five-star reviews and is designed with built-in skin guards and innovative handles to help prevent razor burn while being gentle on curves. Plus, the razor blade is surrounded by a water-activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid, which is a holy grail for skincare. The best part is the razor kit's only $9. Comes with your choice of handle color. I got midnight blue. I got ex- rose. It's nice. You get an extra blade head and the, the ultimate, our mm-hmm. favorite thing. You get a magnetic hook for easy shower storage. And Christy loves it because it keeps it out of her kids' hands. It does. It's also a very satisfying clunk clunk right when, you, when you do it. It's very satisfying. Love it. Athena Club also has the dreamiest shave foam that's back in stock. Together, the Athena Club razor and shave foam will leave your skin soft, hydrated, and smooth. Show your skin you care with the Athena Club razor kit. Sign up today and you get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code SINISTER. That's A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B dot com with promo code SINISTER for 20% off. In 2016... Massaro moved the group from Boulder, Colorado to Sedona, Arizona. It was the same year he said in a 2016 blog post quoted on AZ Central. Looking forward to death makes you truly come alive. Two years later, in 2018, Massaro held a 12-day spiritual retreat in Sedona that he called the Sedona Experiment 2, an event that cost around two grand to attend. So I saw... A video uh, that some followers posted on YouTube, and I'll link it in the show notes, and they willingly posted this, so I'm going to talk about it, that I think they were trying to dispel the myth that it was some type of cult. They titled the video uh, with quotation marks, uh, Sedona Experiment with Bentinho's, quote, dangerous cult. And I believe that those quotation marks were in an effort to kind of say, obviously, we're not Mm -hmm. a dangerous cult. (laughs) Someone commented, looks culty as fuck to me. Um, (laughs) But then in one part, there's an adult woman being pushed around a Walmart in a gr- in the shopping cart. Like, she's a grown-up in a shopping cart, and the person is pushing the shopping cart, filming her, and she's talking about what they did, and they went to an eclectic dance, which is, or I'm sorry, ecstatic dance, which is this these dance raves that he mm-hmm. holds at these things. But I just, I just had to feel a sharp sense of 
sadness uh, for the people of Sedona that they had to deal with these motherfuckers rolling around their yeah. damn Walmart. Or I think it was Walmart. I was trying to tell by the cart color. It was like a gray cart with the blue bumper. So I think mm, it was Walmart. That's Walmart. Uh, and I just feel bad for the people of Sedona that these fucks were <laughs> rolling around their Walmart, bonking into people, be like, oh, sorry, um, acting a fool. Uh, was she in the the front part where the babies sit with her legs hanging out? Because that's what I like to imagine. Or was she in the big part of the cart? Just- <laughs> she was... Okay. She's in the big part, but to like the front part of the cart, but to the that side facing where the baby. So you'd face the same way like a baby would face, mm-hmm. but her body was where the the items would go. Gotcha. Well, one attendee at this retreat was Brent Wilkins. It was the second retreat for the 34 year old who had begun spending more and more time with the group, eventually moving in with an ex member in Sedona. Wilkins had struggled in the past with substance abuse and his mental health. Concerned for his well-being as he became more committed to the group, his parents had encouraged him to seek counseling. His family and friends feared that he was slipping away and said he had become more anxious and detached as he spent hours each day watching Massaro's online sermons. This sounds similar to the people that we described in the Love Has One episode. Yep, absolutely. Where their families are concerned. And also online stuff. It's, That's yeah, how our, a like, lot of people, yeah. And the one guy got up from dinner in the middle of dinner with his wife and kids to go sit in the other room and mm-hmm. watch the, yeah. So it's, yeah. Hard, it's sad to hear about. On the sixth day of the 12-day retreat, Wilkins quietly left the group. He drove to a nearby bridge, parked his car, and leapt 225 feet to his death into the river below. In connection with the investigation of Wilkins' death, police questioned Massaro, who was shocked when officers told him of the tragedy according to AZ Central. Still, police had some questions for the online guru, specifically about the language of his teachings. Of interest were some comments made on his blog, including, You can't die unless you want to. And, Looking forward to death makes you truly come alive. There was also a haunting phrase from a 2016 YouTube video. Wake up to something important, otherwise kill yourself. In a later interview with Truly, Massaro described Brent's death as a bit of an inconvenient timing since it occurred around the same time as an article criticizing the group Massaro also said he felt no guilt or responsibility for Brent's death yeah he said I heard about it and I thought oh Brent that's not nah I don't think you ever call someone's death a bit of inconvenient timing I was uh, struck by that statement, yeah. and he laughed a little bit before he said it. It's in the show notes. Uh, it's a YouTube video on Truly, and freely he says it. I mean, he says, I don't feel any responsibility, and yeah, it was <laughs> it was inconvenient timing. Yeah, Again, the things we say, it's not like we're, you know, well, maybe you misconstrued it, and go listen to it for yourself. Yeah, yep. It's cringy at the oh, very yes. least, and deeply upsetting at the worst. Mm-hmm. It, and it, it does harken back to... His concern is not, I am deeply affected that someone took their own life, that someone died by suicide because of my teachings. He's like, you know, it was really bad for me. Mm-hmm. And it it's all comes back look, to me. We already have this article that's come out from, and we'll get into her in a minute, this woman who kind of went undercover and infiltrated the group during this retreat and wrote some very uh, concerning things. But that had just come out. and. He was already upset about that. And then he's like, oh, now I got to deal with this. One it's of my followers. Look. Yeah. Jumped to his death. Yeah. it's Again, it's how does it affect me? Oh, mm-hmm. this is frustrating. <sighs> While Masara was not charged with anything involving Wilkins' death, he and his two girlfriends left the state shortly thereafter, and relocated to his native Holland. In addition to Wilkins' death, several members had begun questioning Masara's teachings, leaving him feeling betrayed and hurt. Before returning to Holland, he spent time in Thailand, meditating on what his next move would be. Masaru reemerged from his time abroad with a plan for the future, telling his followers that he aspires to create an enlightened society by 2035. He also allegedly wants to create an entire Trinfinity city. Stating in a video to his followers, My vision is to buy a large piece of land and start a new city with all of you. As with everything, I will succeed. To this end, he has created the group Civilization Upgraders, which he says is a dedicated training platform for the sincere seeker of enlightenment who wishes to strip themselves of all internal lies and realize the truth and potential of their real self. This platform trains people just like you 
and spiritually aligned and awakened leadership to maximize their ability to live in a balanced service to an enlightened civilization by 2035. The website photo features an astronaut walking into the horizon. Makes it look like they're going to Mars. <laughs> Which he is, that's part of his grand plan, that he communicates with aliens, he can jump to parallel universes, he's on a different wavelength, he's not even human. There's a lot. Once oh, you yeah. start peeling away the layers, it Fire is hose. a nasty onion. Yeah, yeah, and, yep. it's, and it goes from being... Oh, yeah, we do some of those things to nope, nope, yeah. super nope, yep. nope. Yes. Just six days before Brent died by suicide on that bridge during the Sedona Experiment 2, Masaru had bristled at the accusations of Sedona locals who called them a cult. If you want to call that a cult, go ahead. It doesn't change what we are. And what we are is free of abuse. It's free of manipulation. And it's free of anyone's free will being taken away at any point. He told Vice... We are a cult. Curious, understanding, loving tribe. Not what that stands for. That yeah, is not an acronym. It. You can just make up and that I, shit. I think in the Truly video, he has another similar acronym that's like, I can't, it may be the same one, but he likes to come up with a little acrostic poem of what cult mm -hmm. really means to me, which I don't think was the assignment, bud. No, think. no. I don't think you can appropriate that word, you <sighs> idiot. Take it. Just take it and make it your own. According to former member Gabby Petrus, Masaru believes he is not human. He is God and or Buddha. He is 100 years old. He can control rain, wind, and lightning. He does not feel fear. And he is working on the ability to fly and teleport, which he expects to be completed by 2025. Petrus writes that Masaru has a fixation on the character Superman, calling himself Superman, and wearing Superman t-shirts and videos and photos. According to Vice, Masaru also believes... 9-11 was an inside job. He can change the weather and humans might one day join forces with aliens. In response to those that balk at his beliefs, Masaru told Vice that it is totally fine for people to ridicule his association with aliens now because they will see later on. That's a what long a, list. What a that's threat. a list. Yeah, that's a <laughs> there's a lot, lot going on there. Yeah. Uh, the, my favorite is the rain thing. He said he says, oh, it's. 95% of the time, I can do it. 95% if, if they say, Bentinho, the rain, you know, and we'll get into this part here in a minute, but it doesn't work all the time. No, and there's video no. evidence. What is it? 55% of the time, time it works every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. his rain controlling powers are Sex Panther cologne. <laughs> Another member told B. Schofield, I've watched him control the weather a lot of times. We'll be at a party, and I'll be like, Bentinho, these clouds are not good. It looks like rain. Within 10 minutes, they're gone. He does it all the time. I've watched him move objects on tables. I've seen him multiple times change weather or move clouds. So, yeah, so he says he can do it in the Vice video, and he, t he tells the reporter, okay, focus with me. We're going to... It's raining. They're sitting outside doing the interview outside, and it's raining. And he says, focus, close your eyes. I'm going to, and watch me. I'm going to turn the rain off. And it just rains. It just keeps raining. And she's like, is it okay if we continue with the interview? <laughs> <laughs> it's so awkward. And he's like, oh, you know, it's 95% of the time. But there's another video of him where he, and I was Googling it, and please, magicians of our listenership, as always, we're calling on you. He puts a piece of foil, almost like the size of a gum wrapper, but it's not a gum wrapper. It's like aluminum foil, as you would use to wrap up your leftovers. And it's kind of a strip, maybe about as long as your index finger, in front of him. He's got one hand on each side. It looks like he's on a kitchen counter. And he's got one hand on each side, and the tin foil starts to spin. And he says that he that's a proof of his telekinesis, that he can make foil spin on command. He also said he's able to roll a pin across the table with his mind. I started Googling and there are magicians on YouTube that do tinfoil tricks and tinfoil magic. I would love for Pin and Teller to weigh in. If anybody knows them. Please do Pin and Cause Teller. Because they have that show Fool Us. I don't know yeah. if it's still on. But, I loved it when it was though. Uh, we were watching clips on YouTube the other day. We watched a lot of YouTube. I'm like, this is a great show. It was canceled five years ago. Damn it. <laughs> uh, so if someone could get Pin and Teller to weigh in on how he would make the tinfoil on the countertop spin with his hands on the only thing i think is maybe he had a magnet yeah hidden i feel like everything's always magnets yeah there's some kind of magnet uh but he doesn't have a video of the pin and any time you know there's another video of him like putting his arms up in the rain but the rain doesn't immediately stop and so one of the cult experts said you know that's the thing that that leaders do is to say 
I have all these magical powers. It's like we talked about with the Order of the Solar Temple where they're like, well, prove your magical powers. And really it was like holograms and lights mm-hmm. that were hidden in a back closet. You know, that if you either can't prove it or when you prove it, you kind of pull back the curtain and there's a man behind it and it's not really the wizard. Well, and like with the weather stuff, like we always say, even a broken clock, right, yes. two times. I mean, how many times did he stick his arms up and it didn't stop raining but then the one time it does mm-hmm. everyone loses their shit he's like let me check my phone and he busts out accuweather and it's like fixing to stop and he's like okay <laughs> let me do it in five minutes yeah uh come to texas where as the saying is the weather changes every five minutes mm-hmm. and you could get re- i we could both claim this a lot every time usually yeah. and also here's the thing i used to work at this boat company and our work was weather dependent and it was completely wild to me how these captains who had been captains for you know years would be able to look and be like it's gonna rain in like 10 minutes Mm -hmm. and it's like you're a wizard you're magical yeah or vice versa it's raining and we had to cancel the boat rides it's like well should we send everybody home for the day and they can look you know between the radar but also just looking at the sky and going well this and this type of clouds you can actually tell that it's it's moving through you can see how the wind is shifting so it's like you said maybe you just wait till the right second or you know he waits Mm -hmm. till and, and or then he's all just of a sudden, educated on it. I mean, he's yeah. not an idiot. No, obviously. not at all. He's a genius. Clearly. Yeah. So, I mean, if you s- look up stuff like, you know, you study those types of things, you can get good at that, too. And yeah. then just you spin it to make it seem like you're some magical being when really you just Googled some. You took a master class on weather. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You on know, magic tricks. Yeah. On yeah. Slide of hand. Well, exactly. Yeah. He's like, I have magic. I can pull your card out of this deck. And I will know it's your card because I wrote your name on it with a Sharpie. It's like, you're David Blaine yeah. at that point. <laughs> you're just David Blaine. Because he's like, I've been working on levitation. I'm like, you know who else can levitate? Chris Angel, David Blaine. Yep. But like, yep. it's not impossible. Maybe they're all just actually like really mystical beings that we just don't oh, know. And perhaps. they're just using it to make money. <laughs> that I mean, they are definitely using their uh, art to make money. But those, they taught themselves as magicians. Mm-hmm. Where Entertainers. It's, Again, yes. it's entertainers. If you want to pay 50 bucks to go see mm-hmm. a David Blaine show, go do that. And we're all in on it. We all mm-hmm. know, even though we don't know how it's done, we know that there is a trick to this. He's mm-hmm. not claiming, no, I'm actually levitating. He's mm-hmm. under the guise of, I am a magician, but the, you know, the trickery is amazing. Yeah. And it, it suspends belief and you think like, maybe this is happening. But, you know, it's it's not unhealthy. Yeah, if you told me Penn and Teller had a cult, though, psh, I'm there. Day one, sign join? me up. Am I join? We would join. Although, Penn would tell you, get the fuck out of here and think for yourself. And that's yeah. exactly what you want. That's have the I kind ever of leader. told you how I have a low-key crush on him? I used to date a guy that looked like Penn Teller. Like, what? I get it. I get it. Oh, yeah. It was... He, I don't know if he listens, but he played Superman at Magic Time Machine. And he would always get told that he kind of looked like Penn Gillette. So, oh. Yep. Yeah, I find him... Uh, he, do, he does something. He, I think it's the way he talks and how and he speaks with such authority and is so mm-hmm. funny. And that kind of it's almost like that type of charisma where you're like, I want you to like me. Yeah, he's it's, very confident, which mm-hmm. is attractive, but but also nice. He doesn't seem arrogant. No, he just no, seems no. Like nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like arrogance. That's a huge turn off. Shut me. it down. Mm hmm. Well, indeed, Masaro himself has taken to Facebook. Posting about his supernatural powers. I have affected physical matter, generated motion slash movement in water, made it rain, made wind blow, objects move, changed certain events, shifted into parallel realities where suddenly people and dynamics and the experience around me operates under a different assumption, directed lightning, altered my body in some ways, yes. I uh, had to stop myself from laughing out loud at made wind blow because that's <laughs> so what sorry. wind does. I laughed really loud into the mic. I mean, you just sit outside and you just, you're like, okay, I'm going to make the wind blow now. <laughs> and then you just wait a few fucking minutes and yeah, it's going to blow. You know what this also reminds me of is we just did our mini sewed on the love is one update. All of this entire paragraph harkens a similarity to uh, four pukes in one day. 8,000. Bro- yes. All of the shit. was it? 800 that- level of pain. Yes. Uh, Blood pouring out of her line- ass. <laughs> Lightning bolt through foot. All the stuff <laughs> that was wrong with Amy Carlson. So it's you. Maybe it's just because we recently did those, but you see these and you're like, they're all the fucking same. Like the way they speak, the information oh, yeah. they put out and everything, you know, 100%. 100%. It's this, it's the same shit, different day. And that's the magic of, I mean, on the flip side, 
that's also, I talk about that book, Hitmakers by Derek Thompson, where he talks about how the thing that makes something a hit is that it's the same but different. And so mm-hmm. if you want to have a spiritual group, it's got to have some similarities to something else because if it's totally off the wall, it's a turnoff. But if it's too similar, then people's dopamine doesn't get going in their brain. They're like, oh, I've discovered something new. Mm-hmm. I feel so special. And so you see exactly why something like what he's pushing works is because he's doing the same but different. He's doing a handsome Instagram version of Love Has Won, you know, kind of thing yep. or whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. Also, I just want to say he's full of fucking shit. He doesn't, he's not the one that makes it rain you know who makes it rain <laughs> fat joe and <laughs> lil wayne they're the ones that make it rain yeah. trying to take credit i don't think so sir i don't think so Just fucking imposter, imposter on so many levels yeah. um, if you have a music video of yourself making it rain then i'll believe you you know who does fat joe and lil wayne yeah damn they're the true heroes. Exactly. That's again another cult. I might i might be willing to look yeah. into I don't i'm know. i would follow fat joe into uh, the horizon Sinisterhood will be right back. This show is brought to you by our show's new sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy. We try our hardest to take care of our bodies, but what about our minds? Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is, therapy works. There's a misunderstanding of what therapy is. It can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be sitting around talking about your feelings, or that's exactly what it can be. It is up to you. I love talking about my feelings. Oh, that's my favorite thing. And I'm telling you, I have a wonderful therapist that I found from BetterHelp that gives me nuggets of wisdom every single time we talk and is super relatable. And she uh, she listens to me and then she follows up with me. She sends me very sweet text messages throughout the week. If I say, oh, I'm thinking about doing this or this is going to be I'm nervous about this. She'll say, you got this or I can't wait to talk to you about it. And she also, like I said last time, she gives great nuggets of wisdom as it's not good or bad. It just is. Love it. Or most shit don't matter, which, God, I love that. I want that on a shirt. Absolutely. <laughs> love it. Yes. Well, when everyone is struggling with something, there's no more shame. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Sinisterhood listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Sinister. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Sinister. By now, pretty much everyone's heard of CBD, and if there was ever a time to get started with CBD, it's now. What both scientists and those who use CBD regularly know is that it helps with daily stresses, but you have to use a quality product to get quality results. Charlotte's Web hemp extracts are tested 20 plus times from seed to final product. Unlike many companies, Charlotte's Web has their own proprietary hemp genetics, so the end products are consistent, meaning you know what to expect from each bottle. And they're a mission-driven B Corp, which just means that they promise to help the planet and humanity and all that good stuff. The rain in Dallas has been unrelenting, and I'll tell you who hates thunderstorms is my dog Kate. Like, Mm. terrified, shaking, panting, cannot relax. We give her some of her CBD chews for senior dogs, and it helps mellow her out so she doesn't flip out for, uh, man, every day. Every day, right? I took your your recommendation to get the CBD chews for senior dogs, and now when I take the bag out of the kitchen kitchen cabinet, the dogs attack me and are barking because they love the taste. They're so excited about it. But then I give them to them, and they chill out. It's pretty nice. Um, And also the, the... Allergens in Texas have been wrecking my skin, mm-hmm. and my CBD medic eczema cream always relieves my itching and flaking skin. I can't live without it. So go to charlottesweb.com, get started with the OG CBD brand who kicked off this whole CBD craze, and use Creepy at checkout to save 15% on your order. The code works on all CBD products besides bulk bundles. That's charlottesweb.com. Use code Creepy to save 15% on your order. B. Schofield, an investigative journalist who infiltrated Massaro's group in Sedona wrote of his manipulative tactics, gaslighting behavior, and abuse of his students in a post on Medium. One video shows him speaking at a retreat in Hawaii, where he repeatedly yells, Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! at a person asking a question in the audience. In between cursing at the young woman, Masaru demands to know, What is your calling? Ignoring the woman's remarks that she is triggered by how he is treating her, Masaru instead insults all women, saying that women have a fallacy of self-respect, and that you gotta get over this if you love yourself. He goes on to tell the woman in the audience, 
If you weren't so high up your own ass about this fucking concept of respect, you would actually see how much love there is behind me saying what I say. This video. It's pretty rude. Was real tough to watch for multiple reasons. Several. And the most egregious for me was that one of the other speakers Mm -hmm. who is mic'd up Mm -hmm. is sitting on that stage while he's yelling, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you at this woman, eating a bag of chips (laughs) so loud. Crinkle, crinkle. So loud. (laughs) It's heinous. It's offensive enough what Bentinho is doing. It's very rude. He says it's part of his tactics, yada, 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 whatever. Say what you got to say to make yourself feel better. What do you have to say for yourself, chip crunching man? Dude, it and he, so it's Bentinho, a woman that I'm not sure who it is, and then this other spiritual guru. The spiritual guru is the one that's eating the chips. And he and Bentinho both are so fucking smug. The woman never opens her mouth, but mm-hmm. they both, and he's clearly like behind everything Bentinho's doing. He's just, you know, kind of sitting back. They're both barefoot, which gross. And, you know, his feet propped <laughs> I don't have to up, see your feet. <laughs> eating these chips and everything. And he keeps, you know, having his back and everything with the, because the woman would be like, well, I'm really triggered. Why are you triggered? What am I saying that triggers you? Well, what, what is it your ego? Is that what's getting hurt? Like they're just gaslighting her so bad and refusing to accept responsibility that like your words have upset me and hurt me instead saying, I'm not doing anything wrong. You're the one that's choosing to be upset about this, you know, and just keeps hammering like she can't even answer because he just and mm-hmm. people are laughing. It's very hard to watch the thing. Yeah. For, like you said, for multiple reasons, but especially because, again, that is a sign of some unhealthy allegiance to a person that you're sitting in an audience watching a person a human being whatever you think of it you know he's like we're all consciousness and light and whatever you're watching someone shit on another human being and you don't go hey mm. knock that shit off no one does in fact Not they're like one they person. agree with him yeah yes and they're laughing and encouraging it and mm-hmm. it's you know it's horrifying what is it the only way to let evil triumph is for good people to do nothing like mm-hmm. you're just sitting there letting a person railroad this lady and yell at her yeah and you're letting that man crunch his goddamn chips yeah, into the microphone. That's the real Turn your mic off, crime. man. Mute yourself. Dude. Like, just yell something. <laughs> <laughs> Masaru later justified his verbal abuse of the woman on his Instagram account, saying how he is not human and therefore... Can throw some dirt your way every once in a while without accumulating karma. He goes on to say that... My shouting is an expression of that love and compassion. And that because... I'm retired from needing to deliver pacified spirituality. I can scream at you all freely. The post concludes with Masaru claiming that he was only pretending to be human, but is actually Shiva, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> you just said a lot of sentences, dude, my dude. we've taken a turn. A lot has happened from just the beginning when we were like, we're all into Reiki and yoga. Shit's gone off the rails at this point. Yeah, sideways. We took a turn. We yeah. took a turn. Yes, yes, I- yes. I uh, can scream at you freely because I am not a human. Yes. <laughs> what? But also that, and this is all in the medium post by Schofield, mm-hmm. who is an investigative journalist specifically that kind of shines a light on new age cults. I believe we quoted from her work in the love is one episode as well. Yes. And she actually has a new podcast out on love is one. Oh, I haven't checked it out. Yeah, I have to it take came a up on a, an ad for it popped up because I've been Googling her so much. But she points out that this is classic cult manipulation, saying, like, I can't be held accountable for my actions or for the abuse that I'm uh, throwing your way because I'm not even human. You, you're you beneath me. I'm of a, I'm on a different spiritual level and realm. So you can't, you say, can't blame me. Do you think, do you, do you know who this sounds like? And then my mind started just reeling with every cult we've ever covered yeah. between David Koresh and the Branch Davidians. He thought he was Jesus, mm-hmm. and so he could do whatever he wanted. Again, the Order of the Solar Temple, they thought they were reincarnated. G- I mean, the Buddhafield guy, every the people in Garland, you know, mm-hmm. the, what is it? It always runs out of my head. But it, every single one of them, you absolve yourself from responsibility by claiming this deity status. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The article breaks down, I want to say it's 12 or 15 you know, like numbered things of like, this is why this is a cult. 
These are all mm-hmm. classic you might be cult- a cult. Exactly. It's just textbook 101. If you think you're a deity, you might be a cult. <laughs> I'm telling you, we've talked about it before on our Patreon stuff, but we need to start a line of Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy t-shirts because we <laughs> we bring that into so many things that we say. I mean, I wrote a love essay about how much Jeff Foxworthy shaped my comedy career. Like, <laughs> big fox. He's great. Fan. I have not seen anything from him in years. No, but he, I mean, I think he's Decades? still around. When stuff was open, I think him and the guys did like the Redneck Tour or whatever. But Todd Anderton, who's a friend of ours in a comedy, he he's going to officiate my wedding with Lindsay Power. But he, um, run, he like works in the industry of, of like events and like shopping and retail. And he said that he interacted with Jeff Foxworthy once and said he was super nice. And I'm like, that's all I need. I to bet hear, he is. That. Yeah. I mean, he, he did, just seems like down to earth. smarter than a fifth grader. You can't host that show and be an asshole. <laughs> that's true. I forgot about that show. Yeah. Damn, I love Jeff Fox. Really. He's good. I ain't even afraid of how country that sounds. <laughs> Schofield also outlined sexual abuse within the group, with ex-members telling her that Massaro slept with numerous students while married, and later when he was with monogamous girlfriends. While Massaro now identifies as polyamorous, Schofield is concerned his true intentions are sexual control over his followers. Other ways he attempts to gain control is by recommending his followers participate in extreme fasting, only drinking grape juice for up to 108 days, and by encouraging polyphasic sleeping, a practice where you sleep in small increments instead of a restful eight hours. Nexium. This is Nexium. This mm-hmm. is abusive tactics. But if you only drink grape juice for 108 days, you are not going to be able to sleep eight solid hours. You're going to get up and shit every 15 minutes. You're also or- probably die i don't know i mean yeah i don't i mean at some point you're at least getting some type of sugar nutrient you would probably waste away you know your body's going to eat its own fat cells and probably muscle cells but just having no food in you i mean me personally i can't imagine i can't imagine several people that have done this followers some did it for 28 days one woman said after just three days her friends had to hospitalize her and the doctors told her if you keep doing this there's a good chance you're not going to survive, but she kept doing it. And then one person Schofield interviewed was, I believe, had done it for 108 days. They had lost hair. Teeth had fallen out. Uh, One said that they lost a ton of weight at the beginning, but then it caused so much binge eating that they gained more weight back than they ever had in their lives. And it's just they had heart palpitations when they laid down. They still have heart palpitations, anxiety, depression. It's terrible. I mean, several doctors in this article are quoted as saying, this is not healthy. No one should do this. And no. it's when spiritual leaders like this that people are following promote things like this, it's incredibly dangerous. No, for sure. And there's a, a whole thing on Netflix called Unwell. It's a series and mm-hmm. there's an episode on fasting. And while there are some people that follow, you know, intermittent fasting and things, if you do it properly and you t- take care of your electrolytes and you make sure you're hydrated, that's one thing. These were like you go on a retreat for like 30 days and don't eat. Mm-hmm. And one of the, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, it's probably was like last summer when I watched it. One of the people that participated got so lightheaded that they tripped and fell down and, and you know, they suffered a head injury and then and a ton of people were hospitalized. So it was touted as this spiritual practice mm-hmm. that you're going to ascend to this next level by just not eating. And it it has very harmful side effects on your brain, your heart, things like that. It's one thing if you're doing it for however many hours or days, again, for religious purposes under the care sure. of a doctor, you know, and so, but to say, just drink some juice, yeah. you'll be all right. No. And then having this, man, it's a lot. Of, it's a good way to control somebody, though, is to get them delirious. Exactly. And that's what Schofield says is between the sleep deprivation and you're starving that mm-hmm. you have control over people because they're zombies. They're just in a trance-like state. Mm-hmm. Bentino's practices become increasingly alarming as he tells followers to forget about their family, friends, and children, specifically if they don't understand the group's beliefs. He promotes harmful conspiracy theories like Pizzagate and claims the Nazis won the war, according to a video on Schofield's post. He absolves himself from personal accountability criticizes the teachings of other spiritual leaders, proclaiming his teachings are the one and true way. All classic cult leader stuff. You might be a cult leader. Mm -hmm. In one of his YouTube videos titled, Law One of the Harvest, Masaru describes a harvest. Has already begun. The harvest is a description of an event or period of time where this cycle of third density planetary civilization goes into fourth density consciousness. Apparently the fourth density is that of 
love, understanding, transparency, clairvoyance, and telepathy. And according to Masaro, is the highest level Jesus achieved. Meanwhile, Masaro claims to be on the eighth density, the highest level possible, according to Schofield. Some, that's a strong claim. So, yeah, <laughs> like I Jesus mean. Jesus was here twice as high yeah, as Jesus. And that's, I mean, you're claiming to be a deity at that point, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's John Lennon style. He's claiming to be bigger than Jesus. Mm -hmm. For ex-members looking to rebuild their lives, knowing their guru's messages are a simple click away makes separating from the group that much harder. His stylized, cryptic, and confusing Instagram posts continue to receive thousands of likes per day. Schofield, who describes Masaro as Steve Jobs meets Jim Jones, believes the harvest refers to a mass suicide. One ex-member of the group agrees, telling Schofield, I really feel like he's setting people up for a mass suicide. He talked about the harvest. I always had a weird feeling. In a video shown on Truly, Masaro alarmed many when he said, You can learn from Hitler and apply it in a positive way. It's relatively easy for someone to gain a position of influence over millions of people. With the worldwide reach of social media platforms, millions of potential followers are at Bentino Masaro's fingertips, leaving many fearful the damage of his digital cult can be catastrophic. Yikes. I don't think it's ever a good look to say you can learn from Hitler. You can learn a lot from Hitler. Just no hint of irony. He also he no. that's, a, that's a truncated version of a longer quote where he says all, you know, of these leaders mean I'm I'm trying to I'm struggling for the exact word, but it was something like, you know, all of these fascist leaders. Yeah. <laughs> you can learn a lot. Yeah. And again, a bold move to say it's relatively easy for someone to gain a position of influence over millions of people to the millions of people or thousands of people you're trying to gain control over. Hiding in plain sight, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And, wow. you know, I mean, again, you might be in a cult if that's something your leader says to you. Yeah. And then again, you feel uh, called, compelled to go on YouTube and get into comment fights. Not even really fights, but it's said with such a sense of, oh, you poor fool. You just don't understand Bentinho. Yeah. If you understood, you'd never say any of this. <laughs> it's very smug. Yeah. And like we said, this is still current. Like I went oh, to his ongoing. Instagram page earlier today just to see what his latest post was. And it was... He's standing in front of a giant redwood, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, 15 hours ago. He, it was some wordy post that made my brain leak out of my ears. So, yeah. Word salad chaos. Yeah, exactly. So, what do we think? Yeah, I think he's exactly right. It's easy. It's relatively easy for someone to gain a position of influence over millions of people, even easier now mm -hmm. with isolated people coming, you know, Going through the pandemic, having this at their fingertips, the idea of feeling connected to someone through a screen and having you feel like they're talking straight to you. And again, saying, send me, you know, come meet me for $2,000 and I'll solve all your problems and you'll be in the part of the harvest. That's when it starts to get a little iffy for me mm -hmm. is when he talks about having a secret or not a secret, but a exclusive society and that you got to ascend to another realm and all that kind of ascension kind of stuff usually to get on the spaceship to go to ascend, you usually they're going to ask you to take a take some type of poison. Yeah, and, uh, and and the ones that don't want to take it willingly, or you know, the order of the solar temple style, where they were made to take the ascension. Yeah. You know, so it's it's scary to see how easily. And also, if you say, you know, they're not even the solar temple or or branch Davidians or whoever Heaven's Gate, they're all in a compound together. Versus here, it's people individually. And if he says things like, you know, you have control, just you know literally kill yourself i mean he said phrases like that yeah then what is that dangerous if he's like okay it's time for the harvest my children mm -hmm. let's do this you know what could happen it's yeah it's a new age horror movie it's it's scary how quickly it's escalated in such mm -hmm. a short amount of time it's super scary how accessible his stuff is to just mm -hmm. anyone anywhere because i mean on a much much smaller and Less harmful scale. I mean, influencers influence millions of people mm -hmm. all the time, you know, I mean, and and encourage people to buy things, you know, for brands they're they're sponsoring or working with. 
to me, that is significantly less harmful. And it's also very upfront. Like, this is what True. we're doing, you know? Well, and, and Seth Godin, whose book I'm reading, and I just gave you a copy of it, he talks about if you're doing something that you actually like and is helpful mm-hmm. then and is going to help other people, then it's not necessarily harmful. I follow an Instagram influencer in Dallas named Danny Austin. She posts all kinds of Amazon, whatever stuff. And I got this avocado slicer thing that she posted about from from Amazon it's a really great avocado slicer. And it was a, it was like midnight when I saw her using it. And I was like, impulse bought it, which is exactly what they want. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? She wasn't selling me a, a lollipop that was going to make me lose 90 pounds. You know, right. She wasn't selling me anything. She genuinely cuts her avocados with this, uh, I assume. And I now, Paris loves avocados. We eat them all the time. Oh, I, I use the thing. It was great. It's it's great. It's like a four way slicer. It has these little avocado condoms. You put it over and keeps them. There are silicone things. It keeps them from going brown. Oh, so I'm gonna. So, can you send me this link? Yeah, I'll send you link. It's Thank great. You. <laughs> and so something like that, you know, when it's or, or like again, it's self reflective. Like we have a show. We sell products on the show. We have advertisers. We are content creators. I hope that none of you think that we're telling you this is going to solve your problems no. or change your life or you have to send us a million dollars. Like we said, the show's always going to be free. We're doing it because we like to do it. And I think that we provide something interesting and hopefully funny and a relief from the day. But when you the, the switch flips when it comes to nobody else is as good as me. No one can save you but me. No one else is on my wavelength but me. If anyone else does something that's similar to me, they are liars and frauds and you can only follow me. And also wake up to something important, otherwise mm. kill yourself. Yeah. That type of messaging is that you have to take when you get to 41,000 Instagram followers, which I'm not trying to like clout chase, but it's rude that he has more Instagram followers than we do. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's like when you get to a certain level of people listen to what we say, there's response. We, you have to take responsibility. Yeah, you sure. cannot say, oh, this is just, you know, I'm just putting my message out there. Who knows what you have to understand that there's going to be an impact. And if you're especially if you're monetarily you know, you're making money, you're gaining from it. That's then you really, really have to take responsibility for what you're saying. So I think you're right though. That's, it's a scary horror film for the new, the new Mm -hmm. age where before, if you had a compound of 40, 60, 150 people who are all following this, that sucks. But if you have 41,000 people or even 5,000 people, I mean, you could see something tragic, catastrophic on a mass scale that we've never seen before because they're following a person who's again, Genius grift getting people to yeah. buy him expensive cigars that he and said of all is ages too vital. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what's what and all too. coming from everywhere. Yeah, and also from from a marketing perspective, he's pretty smart too because he's like, you can come to this retreat for two thousand dollars, or we'll stream it for you for two hundred bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even if people aren't going to make the big investment, he can get a ton more people making a smaller investment. I mean, he like you said, he runs it like a startup. He ain't an idiot, mm-hmm. and so. It's just scary when it's one thing to say, I have this, you know, spiritual thing, you know, subscribe to it. But if it starts to be like, don't eat, wake up or mm-hmm. kill yourself, you know, it takes it's a turn. Harmful. It's harmful. It takes a turn. Yeah, it's all it's the dark language and into the world type stuff. Uh, side note, I am going to have Tommy cut out that soundbite of you saying, if you don't follow me, <laughs> I am the most important thing. And. I'm just going to, I don't know. We'll do something with that, though. We, I can't not have that. <laughs> we need a soundboard of our voices, although please don't do that. That's a new thing I'm reading about deep fakes is now they have audio deep fakes. And I thought there's like hundreds of hours of me and Christy's voice out there. Oh, that, gosh. Like you could call our moms and be like, hey, mom, have, I'm oh, hanging no. out at the house. Yeah. I'm not trying to give people ideas, but uh, so if you get a phone call from me. Ask for the password, and if you don't know what the password is, you don't need to be talking to me. That's what I'm. I was <laughs> my just sister and say, I have a secret password. Yeah, I'm gonna give my mom a secret password. We'll and, give each other a secret yes, password, and nobody will know it. So, and we'll never announce it ever, ever. Yes, and it, unlike your necklace, That's no right. one will be able to identify know. us by these words. People will identify me easily. I can't. I can't hide anymore. Well, now you can't even hide in the Matitos bathroom. So no. Uh, yeah. So. You know, we're all on Instagram. We're all on these things. You can go take a gander at his page. Oh, yeah. Just don't follow. Yeah, let's not give him any more followers. Yeah, let's not do that. And don't get sucked into it. And, yeah. you know. Because the answers are out there, but you don't have to pay somebody two grand to pop mm-mm. to find them. No, and if somebody's asking you to do that, that is a red flag that they cannot provide them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, we love providing Sinisterhood to you at no cost. So if you like what you hear, consider supporting the show by donating to our Patreon. We're a small operation creating this show for you by researching, writing, recording, and producing it ourselves. Any amount is sincerely appreciated and helps offset the cost of making and hosting the show. As a thank you, you'll also get some sweet perks like ad-free episodes, a Sinisterhood sticker shipped with a Keep It Creepy and a little ghosty on the back, and a Stamps.com stamp, <laughs> membership to our exclusive Patreon Facebook group for those in the Rolling the Airwaves tier, special shout-out on the show, monthly bonus mini This month's mini is an update on the Love Has One cult. We also have Patreon-exclusive video and audio content, including Am I the Asshole, Relationship Advice segments, and Judge Christie, as well as our all-new True Crime headlines. And our most recent one was discussing a cluster of mysterious deaths that occurred at a college in Missouri. You also now have the fun perk of access to our Discord server, where you can connect with other fans in real time and discuss the latest in true crime, share personal ghost stories, or just post adorable pictures of your pets. We'll also hop on occasionally, and we're hosting monthly Q&As on Crowdcast, where you can ask us all your burning questions. For our patrons not in the U.S., you now have the option to pay in pounds or euros, saving you the cost of the conversion fee. Annual memberships for all tiers are also now available. Those that select this option will be rewarded with a free month of membership. For more details on all of this and specific member tiers, visit Sinisterhood.com and click Patreon on the top banner. And make sure you stick around after our sign-offs to hear your shout-out. So many of you have been tagging us in pictures of you sporting your sweet Sinisterhood merch. Keep those pictures coming. Keep your eyes peeled as we are about to launch a brand new Sinisterhood store. We're going to have all new designs with some cool throwback merch as well as brand new designs that you have never seen before. So if you want to get some cool Sinisterhood swag like t-shirts, mugs, totes, and even clothes for your kiddos, visit Sinisterhood.com and click on shop in the top banner with the new store launching soon. The best thing you can do to help us grow is like, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please tell a friend who you think would like us to check us out. It means so much to us and really helps podcasts like us get more exposure. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and have all of your life questions answered and all of your problems solved (laughs) at Sinisterhood Pod. And like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. Christy, where can people find the answers to your universe? My... The answers to my universe can be found on Twitter at Christy or GTFO and on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace. Heather? I have pictures of me smoking fat stogies and chugging whiskey at <laughs> Heather versus the world on Instagram and all of my enlightening content like uh, my recent tweet on exercise class at MCK versus the world on Twitter. As always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for supporting the show on Patreon. Here are your special Patreon shout outs. Shelby White. Jillian Wood. Amanda Pacheco. Cheryl Stockham. Stacey Downey Starrett. Karen Langley. Amber D. Carberry. Taylor Lee. Angelica Sees. Caitlin Abner. Amy Kosky. Brisette Maribel. Megan Rodenberg. Whiskey Taylor Foxtrot. Ella. Gonna assume it's not my daughter, but also <laughs> perhaps it is. <laughs> Who knows? Alyssa Ann Dillenbeck. Sherry Swanson. Emma Thomas. Amy Wilson. Jessica Scarlett. Elizabeth Stein. Madeline Takis. Jennifer Staley. Stephanie O'Hara. Savannah Coffey. Dale Johnson. Chloe. Tracy Price. Kendra Clark. Lori Golden. Brianna Zimmerman. Rebecca Salfeld. Sarah. Jessica Galvin. Shelby McCorkle. Lily O'Mahoney. Tara Camilli, Lindsay Reed, Anna Miner, Zeta Moss, Kimberly Curtis, Scully, A Mystery and a Mess, Cassia, Justin Ware, Julie and Jillian, Judy Holly, Carly Zilke, Shalane McCall, Jenny Colwell, Abby Frelke, and Amy Hefner Smith. Thank you guys so much for supporting this show, especially during these trying times. We couldn't do this without you. Stay safe. Stay healthy and keep it creepy. <laughs>